Happy New Year. Welcome to 2022 and welcome back to the Wellness Simplified Podcast. We are back after a hiatus of a couple months, but you know, sometimes you got to do these things, but it's a new year and we're back in business and getting ready to talk about how you want to feel in 2022. Let's get into it. You're listening to the Wellness Simplified Podcast. Simple wellness tips to help you improve your life without turning it upside down. With your host, award-winning fitness instructor, nutrition coach, and wellness expert, Susie Fevens. My goodness, it feels so good to be back at the microphone. It also feels like it's been a long time, but also no time at all since I was last sitting here doing this. It's interesting the way the time flows around and feeling both fast and slow at the same time. Anyway, new year, new you, question mark. I don't know about you, but I am being bombarded with sponsored ads. Like I am tired of marking things irrelevant at this point. So many ads for Noom, don't even get me started, Weight Watchers, and even all these different fitness challenges, um, promoting weight loss and all of this stuff. And hey, listen, I know there was a time in my past that I too was doing those same things. But you know, we live, we learn, we hopefully grow. And that is not something that I am comfortable advertising or promoting anymore. I am here for the health and wellness of all of us wonderful people. I do not care what size you are. I really, truly don't. Um, The only reason I care about your pant size is if you're trying to squeeze yourself into a pant size that no longer fits. That's the only time I care. I don't even know what the number is. I just want to know that you're wearing comfortable clothing. So today I want to talk about New Year's goals because it's something that, you know, is on a lot of people's minds. A lot of people are sharing things and it's great to have goals. But it's also important to know why you have the goals. And that's why I want to encourage you in 2022 to focus on a feeling and not necessarily a goal. This past week, I taught uh, an Intentions for a New Year yoga class. And in that class, we talked a lot about choosing your core desired feeling or feelings for the year or to use those to help you set an intention. And I did reference Danielle Laporte's The Desire Map quite a few times during that class. And as I told them, I will tell you, there are some really great things in her book. There are also some maybe not so great things. Um, (laughs) So if you do pick it up to read, just keep that in mind. As with any self-help book, you kind of have to pull out the great threads and leave the ones that aren't really applicable to you. But I really, really, really love her idea of focusing on the feeling because there is always a feeling behind the goals we set for ourselves. It's very rare that we set a goal and like there's no deeper meaning to the goal than the actual thing itself. So for example, if maybe you have a goal of running a marathon in 2022, like what... Why? Why do you want to run a marathon? Is it because you simply just want to be able to say that you ran a marathon? Okay, but what does running a marathon mean to you? What's it going to make you feel? Is it going to make you feel strong? Is it going to make you feel fast? Is it going to make you feel unstoppable, empowered? Whatever that feeling is that you think that achieving that marathon is going to make you feel that is the feeling that we want to focus on. You can still run the marathon. Nobody's telling you not to run the marathon unless you don't want to, then obviously don't. But in this example, if that's what you want to do, that's fantastic. But what is that feeling that is driving that desire to complete that goal? That, that is what we want to focus on. Because if your desired feeling is to feel empowered, There's more than one way to feel empowered. And if we make that our goal feeling for the year, as we move through our year, when we're trying to make choices and decisions, and we know that our goal is to feel empowered, it's easier to make those choices if 
there's a choice between two things. One of them is going to make us feel empowered. The other one is not. It's going to be easier to make that choice. So that is just one example. Obviously, not every choice in your life in the next year is going to hinge on feeling empowered or not. That's why we can have more than one desired feeling at any given time. But I think it's really important for us to know what it is that drive that makes us want to do that thing. Another example, an example that maybe more of us can relate to, because I know not everyone's going to want to run a marathon, is maybe in 2022, you want to pay off debt. Maybe you have some debt that it's accrued over the last couple of years or last couple of decades or whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a lot or if it's a little. Your goal is to pay off some debt. What is the feeling driving that goal? You want to feel secure. You want to feel financially stable. Do you want to feel um, financial freedom? Do you want to feel um, less stress regarding finances? Like what is that thing? Because once again, if you know what that desired feeling is, you can apply that to other decisions throughout the year. It will A, help you stay on track, B, help you make decisions. The tricky part here is sometimes it can be hard to figure out what those core desired feelings are be hard to figure out what it is that you want to achieve. Sometimes it's really, really easy to figure out what those emotions are, those feelings are that you want to feel more of through the year. Sometimes it's hard. So what I'm going to do is something that I also did in my class this past week is I'm going to read off a number of positive emotions and hopefully, possibly, some of them will stick out to you or perhaps they will help spur another thought of another emotion that you may feel a draw towards. And when you hear it, it should be something that immediately clicks in your brain, not something that you're like, oh yeah, that would be nice. No, it should be something that you're like, yes, that is the word. That is what I'm thinking. So I'm just going to read an assortment of positive feelings out and these are from the desire map book, but you know what? Any, any feeling at all, as long as it's positive can be your chosen feeling. So let's just read off a bunch here. We have abundant, accomplished, adored, adventurous, affectionate, appreciated, bountiful, calm, centered, cheerful, cozy, daring, decisive, energized, enthusiastic, free, generous, glamorous, happy, healthy, important, interesting, joyful, kind, loved, nourished, open, open open-minded, optimistic, passionate, powerful, proud, relatable, rich, romantic, satisfied, secure, Serene, sexy, supported, thankful, unique, valuable, vivacious, warm, wealthy, whole. And that is by no stretch of the imagination an exhaustive list, but just a list of some positive feelings, emotions that you may feel drawn to, that may call to you. And I will tell you one of mine. One of my core desired feelings is the feeling of cozy. When I first did this a few years ago, that was the number one thing that came out that I wanted to feel more cozy. I wanted to feel cozy in my clothing. I wanted to feel cozy in my home. I just wanted to feel cozy. Now, obviously I can't feel cozy 100% of the time, but whenever I have the option to put on fuzzy socks, warm sweater, wrap myself in a cozy blanket, you know, snuggle up with a kitty, have a cup of tea, whatever it is, I will opt for cozy when I make purchases, especially clothing related, unless it's for a specific event that's something that needs to be something specific, you know, like if I was going to a ball, (laughs) because that happens so frequently. But in general, I make sure that the clothing I buy is something that I find comfortable and cozy. Hence, my ever-expanding collection of Smash and Tess rompers because they are cozy because there is no waistband and I am very much into the no waistband lifestyle now because it is very comfortable and it is very cozy so that is one of my core desired feelings and I think that that is probably going to be one of my core desired feelings 
for my life. That's just going to be one of the things that I always want to feel is cozy and comfortable. But in each season of life, there are going to be other things that are more of a priority. So maybe for you, the feeling of family, and I think family can be a feeling, that might be something that you're focused on more this year. So when you're making choices about, am I going to take on that extra project at work? Or am I going to spend more time at home with family? If you're able to make the choice for family, you're going to choose that. Obviously, again, that is a place of privilege and not always are we able to make those decisions. But when we can, when we are able to choose the thing that will support our core desired feelings, then we're going to be happier. We're going to be happier. If we go back to that first example of running a marathon, if we know that our core desired feeling that we want to achieve through that goal of running a marathon is to feel empowered, we can take some time to think of different things that we can do right now in this moment to help us feel empowered. We don't have to wait until we cross that finish line to have that core desired feeling. Once we identify what the feeling is, we can start to figure out how we can bring that feeling into our every day. Thinking back on the other example of paying off debt, if the core desired feeling was to feel secure, what can we do in each day to make us feel a little bit more financially secure? while we're still carrying our debt, while we're working towards paying that off? What can we do each day to help support that core desired feeling? Maybe we start tracking our expenses. Maybe we start saving our change and putting it in in a change jar and just having that makes you feel a little bit more secure because you know you have that money there. Maybe you start a little bit of a side hustle. Maybe you just start selling off things that you have around the house that you don't use and that's going to help generate some more money to help pay things off, make you feel more secure. Maybe you're going to start building an emergency fund. I don't know. There's a lot of different things that you can do that's going to help you feel more financially secure. Maybe you're going to start doing more coupon clipping. Maybe you're going to use more of these cashback programs. Maybe you're going to transfer your credit card balance to a different credit card that has a lower interest rate. Whatever it is, there's loads of different things that you can do in each day that might not be paying off a $10,000 loan, but it could be still giving you that same feeling of financial security. So that's what I would like for you to do. If you've already set some goals or some intentions for the new year, or if you haven't at all, if you have set some goals, I want you to really look at them and try to determine what it is. What is that core feeling? What is that feeling you want to feel when you achieve that goal and see how you can bring that into your everyday life? If you haven't set any goals, that's fine too, but think about what you want to feel more of in 2022. Do you want to feel more safety? Do you want to feel more love? Do you want to feel more coziness? What is it that you want to feel? Do you want to feel more powerful, stronger, more important? And the other part of this is don't judge yourself based on what feeling you want to feel. And we can very easily fall into a place of judgment, but it doesn't serve us. And in fact, when we judge what our heart is telling us, it just makes us feel guilty about it. And then we won't want to work towards it. Sometimes when we uncover these feelings and maybe you want to feel important because you haven't felt important in your life, that's something that you need to address. We should all feel important in our own way, in our own lives. So don't judge yourself. And if you do judge yourself, just don't dwell on that judgment, okay? And if you can't come up with an answer right away, that's okay too. You don't always need to have a driving force behind you. But it does make choice making a little bit easier when you do. Because if we can focus on how we want to feel, and bring some small slice of that into most of our days instead of just that one singular day somewhere down the line where we achieve this big magical thing. Just think how much happier you'd be if you get to have a little slice of that feeling that you want every day versus feeling it once. 
bringing it into every day. That is the key. That is the key. Figure out what it is that thing that you desire and bring it in to as many days as possible. Maybe you want to feel more happiness. Maybe you want to feel more artistic. Maybe you want to feel more creative. Maybe you want to feel relaxed. Maybe you want to feel energized, excited, happy. I already said happy. I'm so excited that I'm repeating myself. Healthy. Um, there's so many, so many choices. But remember, with every feeling, there's a huge scale. You don't have to hit a hundred on the scale to feel the emotion. You can hit a three and still get some benefits. If on a scale of zero to a hundred, your happiness level is generally around a four right now, and you're able to bump it up to a 20 on average each day, that's a huge improvement. It's not 100. It doesn't need to be 100. You just want to feel a little bit more of that feeling each day. This is your homework. This is my hope for you, is that you can uncover one, two, three desired feelings that you want to feel more of in 2022 and let those drive your decisions as much as possible. Let those help you decide what you want to focus on each day. Let those help you live the life you want right now, even if you aren't exactly where you want to be right now. That's it for today. We're coming back in hot on 2022 our core desired feelings. How do you want to feel in 2022? I would love for you to tell me, send me a message, send me an email, find me on Instagram at suzy.fevens, Evans and Frank, E-V-E-N-S. Yes, the Instagram handle has been updated. I would love to hear from you and what some of your core desired feelings are for 2022. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the return to the podcast. I hope you didn't miss me too much. I know you didn't miss me at all. It's okay. It's all right. (laughs) Have a wonderful weekend and I will talk to you next week.